Hey everybody, 8-Bit Flashback here, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to add even more games to the PlayStation Classic, and how to access the emulator settings using just your controller. And before I get started, I would like to give a special thanks to everyone out there that's involved in the hacking community that has helped and contributed their time, such as Yapfan Lou, Honey Labs, Dan the Man, Mad Monkey, and Skull Gabby, just to name a few. But there's a lot more people out there involved, and their time is appreciated. And I'd like to mention that I'm doing this for entertainment and demonstration purposes. And anytime you mod or hack your console, you risk the chance of bricking your console. So proceed at your own risk, and please understand this mod is in the early stages, so it does have some issues, and it's really only recommended for advanced users. And my overall recommendation would be to wait until there's a more stable release. So as soon as I load the game, I can go ahead and access the emulator settings menu, and I can do that by pushing select and triangle at the same time. So let's quickly go through some of the settings. The first one's gonna to be to change the disk image from disk one to disk two, etc. We also have save states, and we have nine different slots to choose from. And that's something we did not have access to before. Then we can reset the game from here and load a CD image. And that's how we're gonna load the games from the USB flash drive. And I got a bunch of them on there, and we'll be testing that here in just a few. Inside this menu, we can change the frame skips, the frames per second can display. Plus we can change that region so we can get the full 60 frames per second. We can also mess with the controller mapping, but I really haven't messed with that. So most of the settings inside the menu will work, but there is going to be a few that don't do anything. So you just kind of have to play with it a little bit to see what works. Now I'm going to scroll up to load CD image and select that. And here's where we can select the games that are going to be on my USB flash drive. Now I should already be in the right directory for my game ROMs, but if I'm not, I can navigate to wherever I need to be by using the left and right buttons on the directional pad and the X button. So if I push all the way to the left, to where the two dots are, that's gonna be the beginning of the folder structure. And then if we push X, that's gonna keep going back till we get to the home of the internal memory. Then from there, we can navigate to media, and that's where all my games are gonna be located. And the media is actually my flash drive, so that's gonna take me right to the root of my flash drive when I select media. Now that I'm inside my media folder, I'm gonna scroll over to the right until I get to the games folder. Then I'm gonna scroll over to the right once more until I get to 21. And inside here is gonna be where all my game ROMs are located. And I got a bunch of them inside here. And I've added about 30 different games to my flash drive and that filled it all the way up. So I don't think there's a limit, but that's all I've tested so far. And I have heard that multiple different formats are working, but right now I'm only dealing with the bin and Q files. And what's nice about this is I didn't have to convert anything or change anything. All I had to do was add these games to a certain folder inside my flash drive and they work. So let's go ahead and try a random game out. Let's try Looney Tunes. And as you can see, I have no issue loading that game when I was already inside of another game. I did have Spyro loaded. And I think I have played this game before, but it was a long time ago on my PSP. And I'm not going to do any extensive gameplay. I'm just loading the game to see if it works and sounds okay. And it, it seems to be working fine. So I'll try another game out. This is Duke Nukem. And now I'm going to go ahead and push select and triangle again and select another game. So it's that easy to change games. So again, to find a game, we go to PC SX menu, then load CD image, and then scroll through and load the game you want to play. And I did do some testing by putting these games in different folders and locations on the flash drive, but I was not having any luck. Unless they were inside the 21 folder, I couldn't get them to work. And this is Medal of Honor. And I remember when this game came out, it was a pretty big deal. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and reset the console, and that'll take us back to the main menu, and I'll show you what's going on there. And check this out, when you push that reset button, it gives you the option to do a save state for whatever game you originally loaded. So I started off with Spyro, but I ended with Medal of Honor. So I'm going to go ahead and save that game, and then I can go back to that game whenever I want to. So let's go ahead and load it now, and I'm right back where I left off. So this is good and bad because I'm mixing up those game saves. But it's also cool for the games I'm never going to play, like Battle Arena. I don't care for this game, so I might as well use this for a donor for a save game state, and it makes a nice little shortcut. Now I know a lot of people out there are not going to be a fan of the way this works, but you got to keep in mind this is still the early stages of this hack, and it will evolve and it's going to get better. And on top of that, we don't have to overwrite that game save state that's in the main menu. We can actually just save the game inside the emulator settings with that 9 available save state slots. But for myself, I actually prefer doing it this way because I can create those shortcuts right on the main menu for the games that are on my USB flash drive. But obviously it would be better if I could just get rid of the games I don't like and add the games I like right to the main menu. And maybe that might be coming in the next hack. So now I'm going to briefly show you how to do this hack, but keep in mind this is probably going to evolve very fast and be different by tomorrow. So this is what you're going to want to download and I'll make sure to provide a link down below. You'll click on the download at the top. 
Then once you're done, go ahead and open that folder. Once you open that up, that should be inside of a zip archive. So what we want to do is extract the contents of this and put that inside of a USB flash drive that's formatted with FAT32 and labeled SONY in all caps. So we want the name of that flash drive to be SONY. So my USB flash drive is on the right and I've already extracted the contents to this folder. And notice I do have a couple extra folders and those are just for testing purposes. Those will not be included with the download. And if you've already done this hack from our previous video, then the only thing you need to transfer over is the LOL hack folder. So you're just gonna extract that from the zip archive and put that inside your flash drive and that'll replace the contents of the LOL hack. And I would like to mention that you're not limited to a USB flash drive. You can use a USB hard drive, but it needs to be 2.0. I did try to test out some 3.0 hard drives and I had no luck. And on top of that, there is gonna be some flash drives and hard drives that are just not compatible, even if they're 2.0. For myself, I'm using a SanDisk Cruiser 16 gigabyte flash drive and it seems to be working great. So now it's time to add some games and it's super easy. So what we wanna do is click on the games folder and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here so we can see better. So we're gonna click on this and inside here is gonna be a 21 folder. And now we wanna go ahead and open that 21 folder as well. And inside this folder is gonna be a fake game that consists of five different files. And I did talk about this in my previous video if you wanna check that out. But what you can do with this is convert it to a real game, but I won't be explaining that in this video. All we're gonna do is just add games to this folder so we can play them. And keep in mind that this hack does not provide any games. So you're gonna to have to come up with those on your own. For myself, I already have a bunch of games that are backed up to my flash drive. They're just in a different location. So now I'm gonna to navigate to where my games are located. So I got a bunch of games here and I'm just gonna select them all and move them to that 21 folder. And I did try to play the games from different locations on the flash drive, but what seemed to work best was keeping them inside that 21 folder. So to start with, I just got one fake game inside here and I'm about to add a whole bunch more. And I just added as many games as I could that would actually fit on my flash drive, which is a SanDisk Cruiser. Now for this test, I'm just using bin and queue format for my PlayStation games. But I have heard that there is some other formats that are working, so you can test them out if you'd like. And for all the games that have multiple bin files, they'll work as well. Okay, my flash drive is all set up and ready to test out. So the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and power up the PlayStation and get located on the main menu. Now go ahead and plug in your USB flash drive or hard drive. Once it's plugged in, go ahead and wait a few seconds and then power it down by hitting the power button. And there's a chance it may not power all the way down. And that is one of the issues that is involved with this mod, but that's okay because we have to do a power cycle anyway by unplugging the power cord. So go ahead and unplug that cord and then you can go ahead and plug it right back in and then go ahead and power the PlayStation back up. And if everything goes well, you should be greeted by a new custom game icon with just text only inside the main menu. But for my setup, it is gonna be a little bit different because I did convert that fake game that was inside the games folder to a real game, and that game is Spyro. And I did talk about that in my previous video in great detail, so if you wanna learn more about that, I'll make sure to leave a link down below. So I should have a new game here in my main menu. I just gotta scroll to it and find it. And there it is, Spyro. So if you don't already have a custom game, then this game is just gonna say my custom game. It's just gonna be a blank game, but you can still click on it. And it's just gonna load a PlayStation BIOS that looks just like this. And from here, you can select whatever game you want from the flash drive using the emulator menu. And once again, to access that emulator menu, you just have to hold the select and the triangle button at the same time while any game is loaded. And it doesn't matter if it's a custom game or one of the built-in games. Another thing I'd like to mention, they do recommend this, is before you go ahead and power off the PlayStation, you should select a stock game or a built-in game first before doing so, because it could possibly cause issues the next time you go to power it back on. Although myself, I have not run into any issues yet. Okay, it's time for me to go, but I will keep you updated with the hacking scene for the PlayStation Classic because it's evolving really fast. And if you want to stick around, you can, because I'm going to show some gameplay and testing from various different games. Have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.